Good morning. It's great to see you again, Jeremy. Thanks for joining the Next Wave interview series where we showcase CEOs from large corporations like Intel all the way to startup companies that are making the difference. You were the winners of our Extreme Tech Challenge competition last year, which is the largest competition for startups for impact. And I know we're very impressed by your leadership. In fact, you won the Female Leadership Award last year, as well as really making a big impact in agriculture of the future. So I think it will be great if you can talk about some of the work you're working on and maybe also give you some background about yourself, Xiaomi. That would be really appreciated. Great. It's so nice to see you, uh, Yang. So good morning to you. And um, really, really um, happy and honored to be in one of to be uh, the series here. So um, I just start to give you a little bit of background myself and how the company evolved there and what we do here. So I'm native Chinese. Came to Ireland in 2001, so I'm there. I'm here now over 20 years. So came to Ireland, did my PhD in biotechnology. So basically using natural microbes and plant to increase the food safety and also to reduce the soil pollution. So after um, finished my PhD, I actually got a job in Pfizer for doing drug discovery. And it's just basically setting up ribosome and um, platform technology to selecting high potent antibody and pharmaceutical uh, drug discovery. Um, so after six years of working in a big company, I just thought, um, yes, I like to see something that really created from zero and then I can see the impact for every people and for the earth we can touch, which is really, really back thinking what I, my PhD was doing. So um, in 2012, and resigned my job from Pfizer and uh, starting to explore the business journey initially. Um, and I have to say at the very beginning, I know nothing about business and because all my life is science. So it's really uh, starting learning um, and, you know, all the concept of business, developing business, business idea. And then in 2013 or 14, I think, um, the business idea coming out, we know there's a big pollution in global and in particular at that time, because I'm from China, I know there is a, um, a, a, a need for this. So I gather my team and uh, collecting the uh, knowledge we have already, and then we build platform technology to tackle the food safety and also to reduce the soil pollution. That's really great. So uh, with a population that are growing from today's 8 billion, that are probably going to approach 10 billion by 2050, the availability and quality of food is going to be even more important to all of us. And I understand you have a patent, an invented technology called Constructed Functional Microbiome Platform Technology. And maybe you can give us a little bit about what that is so that we can understand better, based about, uh, better understanding about microbiome products for reducing toxins in crops, right? I think that's the purpose of your platform. So like you just said that um, we develop this um, microbiome platform technology, which will enable us to develop the product that can reduce the heavy metal in the crop that grow from the field. And at the same time, that can increase the crop production, you know, the crop yield. And then, uh, and also by applying this product with the seed and spreading it to the soil, they can remediate the clean up the soil pollution. So that means it like increase the biodiversity in the soil, increase the soil health. So this uh, kind of heavy metal existing majority of the food we are eating, for example, rice, wheat, and potatoes, and vegetables, and uh, cocoa, chocolate. And uh, it's really impact for the health of each one of us, and particularly for children. Um, so we, we actually think, um, what is the root cause for this? It's the soil. It's the crop growing in the soil, uptaking this heavy metal from, 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 this, from the soil. So we, we actually developing the microbes uh, using the platform technology tailored to coat the seeds of, um, for example, rice and wheat and planting these coated seeds into the soil. And while the crop is growing, the microbe and starting the function to prevent this crop from taking the heavy metal to, to the crop and then that's uh, producing safer food. 
And at the same time, like I said, it can increase the crop yield. And it's a, it's a, it's a, the only at this moment a simple, proven, and economically viable solution at this moment, which we already did 200 trials in China with a 30 to 50 percent reduction of heavy metal, and at the same time increase the yield. So the CJ pretty much impacts all of us as a consumer of food, and sounds like it is pretty much out there uh, in our uh, soil, which in turn. Uh, getting into our food system. So, so this is a very much of a uh, problem that have to be solved over uh, all of our humanity. Now the question I think is, uh, once the toxin is in the soil, you are not removing it from the soil, you are protecting it from soil, right? Am I right on this? You are, this, you're, you are right, however, um, it's a very good question. When the microbes actually around the root in the soil, it actually can um, make the available, bioavailable heavy metals change to non-bioavailable. And what that means, once they change to non-bioavailable, that means that, they, that it, it's not toxic, it does not go into the food system, does not go into our system, does, does not go into the system of earthworm. And also, when it's non, uh, non-bioavailable, that means any other uh, beneficial microbes that are already in the soil, they can thrive, they can survive, and then they can benefit to any of the living things in the soil and also to, to protect the plant as well. So that means when the metals that be, become to non-bioavailable, non that means it's clean. So the soil by using the, you know, the, the product, not only we can prevent the heavy metal uptake by the crop and going to the food system and protecting our health, and same time by each season, we're applying these microbes, the soil health is gradually improved and the pollution level is gradually incre- uh, decreased. So this will take a uh, patient levels for for the soil pollution to reduce, but each season it does improve the soil health at the same time. Mm-hmm. Because of the uh, cycle of the, how it, it moves from the uh, plant to soil and then it obviously uh, circulating economy uh, or biosystem. Uh, tell me about what is the number one source of toxins that are going into our soil today? Is it the industrial products or is it agriculture byproducts? What, what, I actually don't know much about this. Maybe you can help us some perspective on it. Especially in developed country, I, you know, in general, our air and, uh, and water is quite safe. And also because there's so much, so many years we tackle this, uh, any pollution in, in air, in water. Soil was the last to tackle globally. And um, so if you look at, for example, in US, um, there's re- no limit of the um, of food and produced from the soil of heavy metal levels in, in food. However, in Europe and in China and in some of, you know, lots of other countries, it does have a limit into it. So you can see soil is the lack uh, after the air and water. However, with our body, how much food we're taking every day, it's a lot. Yeah, that's really interesting. They say, you know, we are what we eat, right? So uh, let me, yeah, so let's talk a little bit about your company. You are a scientist. Now you're an entrepreneur, you're a CEO. Tell me about the journey. Was it a difficult journey? Uh, what, you know, what are some of the lessons you learned from being a scientist, being an entrepreneur? What advice would you give to other scientists who wants to make an impact and who wants to be a CEO of startup companies? Yeah, this is uh, interesting. I could talk to these hours, but I'm trying to shorten it into one to two minutes. Um, um, so as a scientist, as I said at the very beginning, my home life and going to college and PhD and working in Pfizer, and it's all fantastic experience, experiences for me. I really deep, you know, dive into the science and love the um I actually love the also lots of the uh, challenge and also the experiment not working in the lab and um, you know you do ten experiment maybe once or working so uh, uh, every year like three hundred days in the lab you might have a two hundred ninety days of that 
quite a depressing, I think, and, but it's really kind of train your strength of your mind. You're not afraid of failure because it, that's the normal. Getting success from the experiment or that is a jet, that is a jetpot, you know, like a, give it really, really happy days. So through the scientists, it's um, the, the, the life is just training the resilient and also we don't take anything that doesn't work as a failure. We take that as an experiment, as a journey. And then because we believe something that we can discover. So the act of, okay, that experiment doesn't work. That means we change another one. We found that it doesn't work. So, and then from there, how to change to an entrepreneur. Um, it's first of all, I think it's the very quite similar wall kind of scientists and entrepreneur kind of trying to create from zero to one, create something that is not existing or existing. How would we uh, rechange and do this something differently? So um, from the scientists to change our entrepreneur, the, um, the biggest uh, lessons or learn I have is um, you I really need to open minded, open your mind and also to learn, to learn from um, the resources you have and from people that you can gather surround, surround you. So what I did was um, in one of the, in, in, I think in 2017, I knew my thought and my, um, my knowledge in the business side of it is lacking and the business growing quicker. So I decided to go to um, a business school, Harvard Business School, get some business training in this. And that's really, really helpful with the leadership, you know, development and with uh, how to um, conquer and face any challenge and ha- how to bring the company to the next stage. And second, um, being an entrepreneur, don't be um, really kind of block yourself. This is the way I think is right. Okay, so I think what I just got out from that is that being a scientist to entrepreneur the, the best, most important thing is open mind and flexible and being able to take advantage of what's out there so that your mind is maybe less square and maybe much more flexible and being able to adapt and being able to use the network to make a progress. So let's talk a little bit about your business model because a lot of um, other CEOs, entrepreneurs want to know, okay, so how do you make money? How, what is your KPI and what are the key milestones? How do you measure this? So maybe you can talk a little bit about what is your business model and then what are you trying to accomplish? So um, we know, okay, there's a problem. There's market in China initially. So let's focus to get our product to the China market first and to solve the problem. So in 2017, we, and up to now, we, we, we've done 200 trials in China, over 200 trials now. And with the, like I said, with the reduction of the heavy metal to 30 to 50% less in our food and same time, increase a double digit for the crop yield. Um, so after these couple of years, we have been present in, in that market. We built our really, really good reputation. And it is very obvious that the market strategy is our as a standalone, our Wufi subsidiaries in China and, and then to, to sell direct in this market. So uh, in 2019, the end of 2019, we got our product registry in China. And then that's one of the you know very, very hard registration, but we get through that uh, from fast track because it's just so urgent um, need for this technology. And last year, um, you know, which is our first year into the market. And up to now, I say, you know, last year with the COVID up to now, we have $3.6 million sales in the market. And um, so, and that model is quite successful, you know, using the product called the seeds. And um, then they have a large area, each of the projects have large area for solving this problem. So we sell the, the product directly and at the same time provide service advice for how to apply the product. So that business model is very established and, and now we're in scaling. So this is a plan for this half of the year, get the people in and scaling the business and make sure to cover larger areas for next year. And then we'll come back to 
Europe and the US, which is now we are planning for expansion. So in US, we already have uh, companies that are partnered for doing the field, rice field validation, and also the leafy green field validation. And uh, so we plan the business model is that we're working with the food company, the producers, and also the ag input company. So uh, because if you look at this, it's, it's about food safety impact every um, stakeholders in the home food chain, consumers, food company, like I said, producer, the farmers, and also the ag input company. So we were targeting to build partnership with the uh, CPG companies and also to um, put our product in on the field trials or partner with the producers, you know, for example, Western grower, like a leafy green producers or rice and association. And um, then at the, uh, the other point is to partner with ag input company as they could be the distributors or they could be the, um, the licensing of our product and te technology. So that's a kind of plan at this moment in the company that we can address directly. We use the direct sales models and as, as a reputation we have in the China market is very, is very, very strong. And uh, then globally, this is more kind of um, a good model for based on license and distribution. However, we are working with food companies and, and, and producer as well to, to, to direct input for their uh, uh, qualities of their producing or their ingredients. Great. So thank you. It's really about working with supply chain from all the way to the consumer facing and going back to the key segments and then building the network of a business model. I want to go back a little bit to the science. You talk, we talked about your platform and I understand that um, finding the right biome for the uh, toxicity that are facing 13 uh, uh, toxic uh, let's say uh, land and other soils, uh, you have to figure out what is the right biome to do that, right? So I, I'm just curious about, I, I understand you're also using data science to figure out the right matching. Uh, so maybe you can talk a little bit about the, your data elements of the selection process and how maybe you're even using AI to make it maybe enable easier, but I'm not sure, maybe you can talk about this. Yeah, Michael, Jim, um, if we kind of, uh... Uh, trying to summarize very, very simply, we basically integrated three things together. So it's bioinformatics, the microbiology, and also the plant science. So we integrated the um, uh, bioinformatic analysis of all soil samples, plant samples we took from the natural soil, for example, rice field or field for growing wheat, taking those samples uh, of soil and uh, with heavy metal impact and also with, with the plant. And to analyze all this uh, microbiome uh, information into it to identify genes, uh, new like existing genes or new potential genes that will contribute for the sequestering of heavy metals, which you know make the less to like toxic to the plant and to 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 the soil. And um, then also um, once we um, you know, move the, the soil sample and the plant sample, get the microbiome out of the sample and do the micro, like do the microbiology screening. And then we could have, so from the very beginning, there's billions of microbes. So go to the next stage, we could narrow down to thousand microbes and then we get all these microbe genome sequenced. And from there, and we will find clusters of genes that contribute for the heavy metal and, and you know, like a reduction of for heavy metal detoxicity. And using those data that can guide it to the plant screening as well. So this is how to use the uh, data science, the genomic data to guide the screening and we should make sure, so go, going through this process, we could have a, so for example, after yeah, going through the, this process, we're doing the greenhouse. And then from the greenhouse and coming out of the microbe, we will have 90% of confidence that the going field will work and work as we expected. And so this is how you use the um, data science, obviously the AI to guide the whole process of the benchmarks and then to get the uh, really, really strong hit of a microbe and microbiome that we can combine them together, go into the field. And secondly, use because we accumulated lots of data and we're still accumulating this data, 
And then the when all this data is already, you know, so now we have a kind of preliminary platform there. We can see if any microbiome sequence, we can actually predicting, you know, how good it will perform in the greenhouse and how strong they perform in the field. So when this uh, platform enhance, you know, within the next couple of months, then that will really, really can shorten the home discovery processes. You know, it could be from 18 months to 12 months. It could be initially, eventually to six months. Really can find the shining microbes and microbiome together that is really accurate and the time, less time to get this product and development and, and go in the field and solve the problem, improve the health of people and the soil. Very interesting. So it is a, uh, actually I was just thinking as you're talking about this, it's not much different than actually how we change the way we discover vaccines even. Because sort of 10 years now, less than a year. It sounds like you're also doing something similar in your applications because you're looking at the uh, gene, genetic information of the toxicity of different type of biomes. And then based on those studies, you're reducing possibility of what makes sense or what doesn't. And then you're doing your green, I guess, greenhouse trier. And then you can be able to even predict where it's going. So it, I guess with the IT and biology coming together, we can accelerate innovation and development of new drugs and new food. All these things are really exciting to me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is actually, I, I want to say appreciating and really, really thankful, grateful that I was in the X, XTC, um, you know, the, the, the uh, the consortium and join, join, join with you and you, you created is absolutely fascinating. Uh, previously, I knew this is you know, our word, you know, in, in integrating the, uh, bar, well, from a science we call it bioinformatics, but it's really kind of bioinformatics, the genomic and data and combining with IT and technology, integrating with the biology. And then, you know, with the um, extreme tech challenge with uh, many of this company, you, you're, you know, you are in Samsung and you know, other people have, have been there, really make me to open my mind, integrating. That, that's actually since that time, I integrated more IT data science and the bioinformaticians in our company to really enhance the, in this. And now I really found, oh, God is so powerful, extremely powerful, combining them two together. And um, so, yeah, it's really, really exciting. And then I want to say thank you so much for opening my mind through that journey. Well, thank you. No, innovation has no boundary. It doesn't have yeah. no nationality. It has no color. It doesn't have no orientation, right? It's all about what is the good idea that can be able to make an impact. And it's a blend of different disciplines. Now, you are, you are scientists. Uh, coming from biology, but actually different science can combine and we can even and, and increase and maybe even accelerate the innovation in the process. And that's the idea behind the, uh, what we're trying to accomplish. XTC is more about really combining different background to make an impact because impact, uh, we need to figure out how to make a bigger impact in maintaining sustainability. And we cannot just do normal course of action so what you are doing, what others are doing, will help all of us to accelerate that. And being able to reduce toxicity in our food is a big deal. So I'm really excited about what you're working on. So tell me, if you project five years out, what, what would you uh, think would be as your measurement of success? Okay. Um, in five years, I, if I see the success I measure, I would love to see, um, you know, our product technologies applied to all rice and wheat field. So um, if you think in amount of people that can feed from the rice field, you know, include you know, that would be 50% of the home world population. Wow. And yeah, so we are talking about the, so for me to think in, it's a bigger impact for, the, like you just said, bigger impact for all people that's there's no colors there's no um, developed country or developing country so i have a heart of this uh, to make the big impact of the like you just said at the very beginning the food safety and food security for all people that's equally and then we're thinking yes um other crops is very very important 
However, what is the biggest impact first? We can't do all everything in one go. What's the biggest impact is our stable food, rice and wheat. So my goal, if in five years, if our product and solution can cover all this field globally, I would think that's the great, great su- success. And, and uh, I will think the success from the impact we can do. So like we said, if they apply for all of them, that it means like a majority of the food we are taking to our body, which a big portion, that can be safer. At the same time, by applying a product to this type of field and um, increase the, the majority of the stable food, uh, increase the yield, that's going to have an impact, a huge impact for world hunger, for, you know, we we're trying to achieve a zero hunger for the world, especially for the developing country. That's massive. And you have a very uh, ambitious goal, but I think that ambitious goal can have a huge positive impact on humanity. So I'm wishing you a very much of a, a successful journey because when you're successful, I think it'll have a huge impact on of course, all the three things you mentioned earlier. Tell me about, is there other com- competitive options? Do you have a competition uh, or is this a kind of new area? Yeah, uh, so um, I'll give you my, um, one of the experiences I was speaking to uh, uh, a VC and they are very interested to our company just recent days, and um, two weeks ago. And uh, because I was t- told by my, Current investors say, okay, so we don't need to talk to VCs now. We have a long list for the B round. We are focused on business. So because you're this company, what we do now, but it's quite attractive for lots of the people, VCs and family offices. Because it's area, everybody want to make me might might want to be the part of some journey we can make impact to to social, to the environment, to, to the health of the planet. And um, but but anyway, so the, that that visit was introduced by um, by one of the current investors. We just have, have a talk with them. So I more kind of ask questions to them. I just say um, because they said, okay, your company doing actually addressing the root cause, which is the soil, the food safety, and it's really fascinating, especially driving you know like addressing the heavy metal problem. So they said we have already conducted 2000 lists in this area using microbiome. There's no companies in this area using the natural microbiome or using the actually the um, simple and also economical viable solution to try to, to, to address this massive problem. So, uh, you know, I think one of the big issues that we have to think about is biodiversity, which in turn actually impacting our immune systems and other issues that are coming because of lack of bio, biodiversity in our food and biome, which we don't understand the, all the dynamics in our own body, but we know that has huge implication to our well-being, our psychology, and connecting with the overall the awareness. So uh, it's an interesting uh, subject. I think we're going to learn more about, but the bio- biodiversity seems to be a big issue. What is your thoughts about that subject? Yeah, um, so totally agree with you. When I think, in, with, I look at the big picture, how um, you know human activities and impact reduce the biodiversity significantly from the animal world, from the plants, native plants over that thousand years, many years, and it's uh, it's gone. And then if we look at it, um, that's all we can see, you know, animal plants, that's all big. Then if you look at it, look at the soil, which is uh, all the living things we are based on, that's our ground. And if you look in, in there, um, with uh, the agricultural input, you know, uh, pesticides and fertilizers, and also with the countries that have a practice and have industry waste stuff into pump into the soil. So actually the soil is a sick. So it's like the mother earth is a sick, you know, from the soil level, because with these, all these uh, industrial practice, the agriculture practice, and also the um, industry pollution, the, um, the soil biome diversity is reduced significantly. So if that significant increase, in, you know, like impact the nutrition that we are taking directly from the soil. So for example, minerals are reduced. And, you know, if you look in the, uh, I can't remember what exactly the data, 
they have probably have a seen like with within last 30 years there's 30 to 50 percent of the nutrition that we took from the food and the food directly um accumulated from the soil and then they uh, uh, beneficial minerals and, and, you know, reduced into significant amount. And that impact our immune system, our health in general. So the, um, um, so then come back for the diversity of the soil. So with all these input, if you look in the um, microbiome um, testing, each, each of the season we're working and with adding some of the beneficial impact of our microbes, because the um, like I said, the, the toxicity levels around the root zone, the soil that reduced, then you will find more beneficial of bacteria, fungi, more beneficial nematodes exist. So you look in these, um, and that is so important, you know, for the soil health, and then that linked to the plant health. So the plant can absorbing more soil microbes, even, you know, the beneficial one into it. And then, and then when the soil microbiome is healthy, that means more nutrition is available from the soil that can be taken to the plants and ultimately to impact our health. And at the same time, I still go back to the diversity, biodiversity of others as a beneficial for all other living things, you know, animals and animals and other plants as well. So I'm a big, big believer we need to enhance the biodiversity of macro biodiversity, which is the, the, the animals and different plant species. And also even very, you know, more important to address the root cause, the, the, the micro that, you know, that biodiversity is, for example, the microbiome in the soil. So when that enriched, soil enriched all living things that is thriving. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.